about 1880, my great-grandfather, Innemeyer, came over. He was a bricklayer in Germany. Uh, began uh, laying brick here, and from that became a contractor. Next generation, my grandfather, Harold, continued the line as a bricklayer and a contractor. Uh, my dad was an apprentice for a short time. The war interrupted that. Uh, shortly after that, about uh, 1958, I began laying brick. 1960, became an apprentice. Been with it ever since. We do relines periodically on the furnaces. We're trying to stretch the uh, durations between relines, but always in the past, we've had excellent, excellent workmanship from the from the locals here. Every time we do a reline, we try to improve the design of of different areas in the furnace. We keep changing designs and come up with new and more intricate types of uh, installations. And most of the people that we've seen here have been very interested in, in learning the new techniques. And we explain to them briefly why we're doing some of these things so that they have some background. And we've always found that that but most of the most of the uh, craftsmen were very interested in in the new designs and the new techniques, and have always uh, jumped right in and, and done whatever we needed to do to, to get the installation uh, proper. On this reline and the related stove work, we've we've thrown some pretty intricate designs at the brick layers, and and they've performed excellently in learning the new techniques. It's like uh, driving a space shuttle compared to some of the stuff we used to do. It's very intricate brickwork. It takes a special kind of guy to work a reline because it's, it's dirty work usually. Uh, the brick is different. The, the, the carbon and graphite refractories are, are dirtier to work with. The mortars are dirtier. So yeah, they definitely take pride in their work. And to come onto the job, money helps I'm sure, but um, it's not an easy job, and for them to come here time after time after time, you can see a pride of workmanship. You've got to have uh, an iron will because of the hours you pull, you know, uh, you got to have a good back, you know, you got to be sharp because anything can happen around here, you know, and stuff. Look out for your buddies, you know. Just basically want to be here. Now, I like this kind of work. I like this better than outside because everything's always different, you know, and, you know, good people to work around and stuff, you know, I just, I just like this kind of refractory work. Yeah, that's what I want to do. 46 years and I'm 64 years old. Honest to God, why should I lie? Yeah, I started in 1949 when I got out of high school. Well, it's more intricate. It's more than putting one brick on top of another brick. You know, like in this furnace, you got inverts around the twirls. First, you put them in. Uh, there's arches, connection work. Uh, it, it's all different, interesting work. Forty years ago, you could sit in a pipe and cut the brick with a hammer and chisel and scutch it down. The materials are so hard today, you can hardly cut them with a saw. It's an ownership thing. You get them in there and you explain to them how you, you want it done. They're willing to take over the responsibility and they understand that it's them putting it in. And they understand if they do well here and people see that, then, I mean, it's like inviting people back that you like to your house. I mean, if people are good people, you always invite them back for another dinner and come over and drink beer at my house. But you know, you, and you expect good work, and you know you're going to get it from these people. I've been doing it for about nine years and really like it. I've seen all different aspects of it now. Gone from red brick to fire brick now and seen very many different things done. Refactory work, every day is something different. I mean, one day you might be working with brick, next day you might be doing insulation, insulation brick, and the next day it might be K wool. I mean, it, there's just so many different aspects of it. Oh, I'm always worried about him, and when he comes home and tells me certain stories, it's always kind of scary. Sometimes I just don't want to hear him, but for the most part, I know he's safe, and I know uh, the surrounding is safe. 
So, um, you know, as long as he calls when he works over. <laughs> I'm real proud of him. We're to the point uh, in our lives that um, as young as we are, we've already got the house and the garage. So uh, financially wise, um, you know, it's very secure. We always know there'll be a home somewhere that needs to be bricked. Some people don't realize that how much work is in fire brick work. Some people think you just go in and stack one on top of two, you know, and that's it. And scrape a little mortar on them. Well, it gets into detail. You know, it's not just raise a line and lay a brick. There's angles, arches. It's, you get into such detail sometimes with the steel mills around the country and the one we have here. I know I'll have a good future. I feel that there's always going to be work for me somewhere, hopefully here. Brought the Chevron refinery in Richmond, California. This is a new FCC um, unit. The process is gasoline. And in these three units, we're gunite in the third stage. We're gunite in, inside the regenerator. And we're installing AA-22 in the reactor. On this particular job, what they're doing here now, this is called a, the, uh, the cat cooler bypass line. This line has approximately four and a half inches of refractory line inside of it. This is the first stage, primary stage of gasoline breakdown. It's called a Farron Cracker, Cracker and Coker unit, which is what FCC means. And you can't make gas without it, a petroleum product. I've been a bricklayer for approximately 26 years. Uh, I got into it actually by a fluke because I got out of the military and I didn't know exactly what I wanted to do. And, Think about what I had done before. I had worked with as a mason's helper before. So I decided to try the mason's job. And it just ballooned and carried on right from that point. Uh, I, my first job was in Manitoba, Canada, uh, local number one. Well, I didn't, I didn't really get into fire brick work uh, until I moved here to California. In Canada, all my experience was outside red brick and block and stone work quite a bit of stone. I have a site specific training program set up which takes approximately two and a half, two hours for that. Uh, whereas I, where I teach you how to, uh, what to expect on the site, uh, walk you through the site, make sure you're familiarized uh, with the site. Uh, there is, you don't have any reservations about working here. We have approximately over 650,000 hours on this site and uh, there's no recordables which is uh, quite a mark in itself. Inside the reactor, we're installing AA-22, which is a uh, high abrasive material, um, very high in coal crush. And that material is mixed in a Hobart, sort of like what um, bread's mixed in, in a bakery. And they mix it in that, and from there it goes to the men. They install it by uh, either with the stick or by thumb, and once it's installed, they ram it with a little rammer, and they trim it to a flush surface. The set time on AA-22 is about 15 to 20 minutes. It sets very fast. They have a very short work time, so they have to install it very quickly. Otherwise, it'll set up, and uh, they'll have to discard it. It's no good. The gunite station. Um, the forklift takes the bulk bags to the structure, which they dump them into the 1,000 pound mixers. They pre-mix the material to pre-dampen it just so the dust is taken out of the material so it's not so dusty in the unit. From there, they drop it onto a platform. The platform, there's shovel men that shovel it into the Allentowns. You have an Allentown operator then feeds it up to the man that is shooting it in the hole. At that time, the man that is on the nozzle will add water to it, 
He'll get his right air pressure. He'll add the right water, and he will spray it on the wall. The environment on Gunite is a very dirty and nasty job. But the bricklayers and the hot carers that are involved in this are well trained, and they really do enjoy their work. Well, every job's a little bit different than the next. So when they explain it when you come in. Like every job you go on to, they always explain. Every morning there's a safety meeting. We have uh, safety breakfasts and safety lunches and safety everything. That's their big push point. There's uh, another bricklayer female um, downstairs that's working with our with our corp, and I see several other women iron workers and pipe fitters, and there are probably ten of us on the job. Uh, get up around five, get here by six thirty. Come on in, get our safety meetings. Go, up, you know, get appointed to whichever crew we're going to work with. Go up into the into the holes and do the assigned work, which is either gun eye out, gun eye, or packing, or you know, any uh, there's fireproofing that's going on. Find out which crew you're working for. Go out and do your do whatever position you're assigned, and then have three breaks. They're four 10 days. Uh, they're supposed to roll over to five 10 days. We'll see what happens. And, um, you know, home by, home by around six again. I'm Rory Lewis. Uh, I'm a bricklayer for the last 26 years. Uh, I'd like to introduce this to my son, Jason Lewis. He's a two and a half year apprentice. We've been told we're like the doctors of industry because our phone rings at 2 in the morning, 4 in the morning, Saturday, Sunday, Christmas Day, and there's an emergency. If you want to stay in this business and make a living, you, you have to go. go when the job's there. And a lot of times, a lot of these plants shut down on holidays, Christmas per se, so they give their people time off, and so that's, that's the time they repair their boilers. The way I describe a refractory worker, he's got to be a hard-working man, dedicated to his job, he's got to be willing to get up anytime, go to work, because the phone's always ringing. You know, we don't have a certain days that we have off, but um, good head on their shoulders, I mean, you know, there all the time. I'm proud to be a bricklayer, you know, it's a, it's a good trade, it's kind of nice to have something under your belt, you know, I can build things, it's, it's a fun job, I really like it. When I first started, I didn't know what, what tape measure, now I feel I can build my own house, you know, no problem at all. It's fun, the, the, people, you, the people you work with kind of become your family, you know, you're with them, I'm with with these guys, you know, more than anybody. Here 10 hours a day, every day, you know, sometimes more than that. They get to be, you know, kind of like family. I got a lot of good friends up there. Everybody watch out for each other. It's a good line of work. Well trained and tenacious. He has to understand his craft. He has to be able to apply it uh, under some very adverse conditions. They're all good mechanics. They have to be because everything you do, you stand on. It's not like you use a, an I-beam or a lintel to carry your wall. You build an arch, it has to stay put when you get on top of it. It's good work. Being in here with all the cranes over your head, I mean, you got to pay attention. There ain't no place to be walking around in a day. This has been going on for a thousand years now, and I can't see it dying because of some technological uh, period in time that says uh, that dictates we go another direction. You always come back to, to, the, to uh, masonry.